Hey what's up everybody, thank you for checking this video. If you want to see more, please leave a like and subscribe. But even if you don't, enjoy and happy coding! This episode is brought to you by Skysilk. If you're looking for a free Linux-based VPS in the cloud, go to skysilk.com. No strings attached. Just awesome stuff. Hey, what's up guys, Alex here. Thank you for checking this video and welcome to this quick update for my HTPC. What I wanna do, I wanna finally upgrade this little amazing machine that I've been using for the past year with some new specs, with some new hardware. So if you don't know anything about this little thing that I built a year ago, there's the video that in the collection that you can click in the top left here and you can find all the reasons why I decided to build this HTPC. But mostly, just to quickly recap, I wanted to build a custom PC to run Linux and install Steam and all the games and also do some uh, Linux development. I started this project a year ago really really cheap, like I tried to spend less than $500, I ended up spending around $600 which wasn't too bad but I was able to save a lot of money because of all the parts that I picked. It was pretty good, like it, it served me really well for the past year but finally I was able to uh, put some money aside and invest a little bit on the hardware and finally thanks to the a dive or the drop of the prices of Bitcoin or these like cryptocurrencies, I was able to find a GPU that wasn't stupidly expensive like it was up until a couple of months ago. Like this GPU I found it for $200 while I think like two or three months ago was around $400, which is it's so stupid. But anyway, this is a quick overview of all the parts that I picked to upgrade it before actually opening it up and putting all these juicy new things inside this amazing case. So I decided to go with the EVGA GeForce GTX 1050 Ti for a couple of reasons. First, the price. $200 for a graphics card, this powerful, it's pretty good. And the other reason why I picked this is the level of noise of the fan. So this is a single fan and in idle it's really really quiet which it's something that I really care about my HTPC because it's hooked to my TV, it's in my living room, I don't want these fans like spinning super loudly so I was trying to find something powerful enough to run games in HD but not too loud, too noisy in order to have like multiple fans like spinning all the time. And also this is an intake type of cooling so the air comes in, gets sucked inside the card and gets spit out from uh, the grid. The hot air doesn't get out from the side of the card, like inside the case, but gets spit out most likely like the majority of the hot air gets spit out from the back. With this I'm able to integrate a couple of Fractal Design uh, Venturi HP12 which are really great fan that go really well inside the Fractal Design as well, no 202. And they're pretty quiet and I will try to create a good airflow which by using this fan to suck the cold air in, pushing it towards the graphic card that sucks the cold air as well. So we're gonna have a lot of suction and then all the hot air will be pushed pushed outside the case from the back and hopefully because it's a really small form factor I don't want any hot air circulating inside the case especially because I just have one single Noctua CPU cooler in there and I don't want to like heat up too much the uh, motherboard or CPU or leaving any like hot air circulating inside the case so hopefully this system um, will work but we will test it and then I decided also to upgrade the hard drive with the Samsung 970 EVO NVMe M.2 because right now this is running a regular SSD like a crucial MX SSD with 250 gigabytes and it's fantastic, it's pretty great, I have no complaint, but because I recently had an issue with my laptop, which I'm running Linux on my laptop and I had to send them in for repair, I'm not gonna have my laptop for the next three to four weeks probably, and I really need a Linux computer with elementary OS installed in it where I can code it. And I didn't want to install all my coding things inside the same operating system that I'm using for gaming. I wanted to keep those things completely separate so I decided to buy these and I'm gonna uh, install Elementary OS and double boot it with the System76 Pop! OS operating system which I'm currently running to play all my games on Steam which is 
pretty great, pretty fantastic. To conclude, something that I forgot to tell you, another reason why I picked this graphic card is because of the power consumption. So the Note 202 comes with, or at least the model that I picked, comes with a power supply unit that spits out 450 watt. And this graphic card, because it's really small, it's really tiny, it fits perfectly here, consumes just 300 watt, which is perfect. A more beefy graphic card and something that can play 4K at 60 frame PS, which I totally don't care because I don't have a 4K TV. I'm not an avid gamer, I'm just like an average gamer. I don't need to play AAA games and just like casual gamer, uh, having something that it's powerful enough to run 1080p 60 frames per second, but it doesn't require as much power as a counterpart, like a more beefy graphics card, it's perfect for me. I don't need to upgrade the PSU and I can keep everything quiet and cool pretty easily. I shouldn't have too many problems. So, but there you have it. This is a small introduction. Now let's continue finger cross and enjoy the building process. So the first thing that I did was unscrewing the motherboard, unplugging everything because I wanted to install the M.2 drive right here. But then I realized that probably I, it's not necessary to do it because uh, the case, the Note 202, you can, after forcing it a little bit, it's kind of scary, but you can completely open it and remove the back cover and the back cover, uh, without a back cover, you have these hole here that basically shows the back of the motherboard. So probably I could have done everything without unplugging anything, but whatever, it's okay. I needed to remove this because I wanna clean a little bit these uh, dust filters and I wanna be sure that the fans are in a proper position. So I wanted to remove this and clean it a little bit, but let's continue. So this is the EVGA GeForce GTX 1050 Ti, which is, as you can see, is like really, really small. It fits perfectly in this super small form factor case from Fractal Design. The particular thing about this case, because it's flat and it like it forces you like this configuration, you have to install the motherboard flat down. You cannot put the graphic card attached to the PCI Express like a regular build if it was like a vertical build but you have to put it flat as well. Luckily Fractal Design offers this little adapter that it's a sort of like an L-shaped bridge that you can install on the PCI Express and then install it on the graphics card so you can put the graphic card flat on the side of the motherboard respecting the configuration of the case. As you can see the fan are bigger than the whole graphics card which is kind of like silly and it feels like a little bit of an overkill but I wanted to avoid as much as possible to have hot hair sitting inside the case because everything is super cramped. I'm gonna try to do a little bit of cable management but I don't have much room to like to organize this thing and this graphic card because it's completely open on the side and has one fan, the fan is gonna suck the hair in and all the hot hair is gonna get pushed out from the back of the graphic card, so where the HDMI and DVI connectors are, but because it's not completely closed, a little bit of hot hair is gonna also come out from the back of the GPU inside the case, so having something that blows the cool air in is gonna 
hopefully we're gonna try to push it out as much as possible whatever we want and here on the side and all pretty much on all the sides here we have some grids in the case so I want to try as much as possible to not leave any hot air inside sitting and circulating inside the case This is the moment of truth. Finally, I plugged everything in. I attached an HDMI cable to the graphics card, to the monitor, and let's turn it on and there you go. So yeah, the computer is on, the lights is on, so the, the fan is spinning, everything is spinning. Let's finger cross and look at the screen and wait for, uh, oh, there you go, we have it. This is a uh, confirmation that we have um, video output so everything is running and let's see if the operating system can boot properly even with this all new hardware that we just installed just wait oh it looks oh there you have it this is pop os fantastic everything is running smoothly and we it looks like we don't have any problem the first step that we should do after we install a new graphics card is, uh, if you're running like me, Pop! OS from System76, is opening the Pop Shop or like the App Center, whatever you want to call it, and go inside the Installed section. Automatically the software will recognize that we have a new NVIDIA graphics card and uh, will recommend to install the NVIDIA Drivers 396, which I already have installed. If you don't want to pass through the App Center or you don't trust an automatic installation, whatever you want to do, you can go inside the System76 installation guide of Pop! OS and if you scroll down we have the terminal command with sudo where you can manually install the drivers itself. After installing the driver we can finally access the NVIDIA X server settings where we can see all our graphics card settings and we can double check if everything is properly recognized, if the temperature is properly set in place and everything is running smoothly. Just to conclude this video I did a quick benchmark by running Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor at medium slash high settings. I didn't put everything in too high because of course my computer cannot handle it but the results were really promising. An average of 56 frames per second with a maximum of 142 frames per second which for a low-end computer, an HTPC for an average gamer like me, it's really really great. Well, that's pretty much it for the video. The building process and the whole experience was pretty smooth. I don't think I ever built something or upgraded something this small inside such a small form factor case like the Note 202. And I was surprised, like other than the usual issue or like the small issues of trying to find a good place or a good spot to put all your keyboards and not having a, like a cramped something going on top of the fans or like on top of the CPU coolers it was like pretty easy to do it. The last thing that I have to do and it's a step that I'm gonna do off camera it's um, uploading here the Elementor US Juno developer preview which was released recently and install it on the M.2 drive in order to have a dual boot between Pop! OS and Elementor US to have like gaming and coding completely separate but I'm super excited this was like pretty great the Nvidia drivers were uh, really well, like worked really well. I didn't have any problem making my system recognize my graphics card and uh, running benchmarks and playing games and 1080p at 60 frames per second, which is like, I'm impressed. Like considering that this whole system, uh, it's around $800 Canadian, so I guess could be around uh, $600 US. It's pretty great. It's pretty damn fantastic, right? As usual, before concluding, please leave a like or subscribe to my channel. And if you have any comments, if you want me to improve something or you think I should have done something differently, please let me know in the comment below. Like, I'm not an expert PC builder. I do this as a fun project, as just on the side. So if you have some suggestions for me, just leave a comment and I will try to improve in the next videos if I will ever do more builds. I don't know. Like, I'm more of a tutorial type of guy. So this is kind of like 
a fun side project to do different type of videos. Thank you so much guys for watching and I talk to you in the next one.